Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the game room, and today we have Monet Bradley with us, graduating close to the end of this month, getting her doctorates in, in pharmacy. How you doing, Monet? I'm good. All right. So you must be excited. You know you're graduating. Very excited. All right. So we're going we gonna to rewind and go back in time a little bit. Tell us about uh, tell us about you being a freshman. What were some of the, the hardest the hardest challenges you had? Um, I would say studying. Growing up, I made all A's and B's in school. I didn't have to study. Had a photographic memory, but going to college is a different ball game. So you actually have to, you know, stay in the books and study, pass your tests. Oh, okay. So. Do you believe HBCUs or historical black colleges or university need a positive leadership group to guide and help freshmen through their first couple of years? Yeah, I think it's, it's very important that you have those leadership groups around because a lot of times black colleges have the stigma that it's a party school and more so um, education needs to be the focus. So if you have those groups and you have those mentors and leaders, you know, to, to guide the freshmen and let them know there has to be a balance between, you know, getting your education and also partying. I agree. Okay, Monday, um, you were you are a PK, either, you know, you can say a preacher's kid or a pastor's kid. But uh, you know, your your father owns his own church in D land, but even when you went to college, you found a church home. How important was that? That was very important because if it wasn't for my relationship with God, honestly, I wouldn't have made it through pharmacy school. So it's very important, you know, to have those values instilled in you. So also, you know, when you go away to college, you have that, that church home, to have that foundation. Well said. Okay, also, uh, also, why, also while you were in college, how important was it for you to have family support? It's very important because you have a lot of students who go away, they don't have the backup and the support from the family that they need. You know, you have some students who go away and they're pretty much on their own. So they they have to have the support from their friends and, you know, you know, other people. So I think it's very important that I had family support while in school. Okay, so you being in college, you know, especially fam, you, uh, it's a lot of influences. You know, you got partying, you got football games, basketball games, it's just a lot of temptation. So how, how how did you stay in the books and keep your schoolwork your number one priority? Um, Going in, I knew going to get my education was my, my number one focus and I didn't want to be deterred from that. So I, with me and my own values and personal beliefs, I, I knew the importance of getting an education. You know, you can play and, and party later. All right. So do you believe that it's important for, for blacks to not only attend, but also support HBCUs or historical black colleges and universities? It's very important because a lot of HBCUs, you know, um, ha have the opportunity for, you know, blacks who are unable to get in some of these universities, such as Florida State or University of Florida or UCF. I mean, HBCUs, you know, they, they provide opportunities for for people who you wouldn't expect to mm -hmm. make it to college, and those are the type of people who you know strive and are are dedicated to to make it through. Okay, right, right. So with uh with Rick with with Rick Scott, the governor, making a budget cut on HBCUs, how does how does that impact how does that impact our schools, but also blacks in general? I mean, it would have it would be detrimental to the black community because. HBCUs, you know, give the opportunity for blacks to be able to, to receive an education and, and go to college. And if he's cutting, um, there are a lot of programs such as, you know, the journalism program at FAMU that could potentially be cut. You know, and we as a community, we need to stand up, you know, and, you know, don't allow this to happen. Because if you take all these programs away, then, then where are the blacks going to go? All right. So, Monet, you know... You graduate and you know you have a very bright future ahead of you and um what would you say to a young man or a woman who's in college and, and, and they're struggling, whether it be, you know, financially, they're struggling with grades or just the college life, you know, what would you say to inspire them to help them go that next level and to keep going? I mean, if if you can put anything you put your mind to, you can do. I mean, everybody has setbacks. Not one person can say, okay, they went through college perfectly, you know, crossed 
all their T's dotted every I. So, I mean, I even had setbacks myself in school. But long as, you know, you get yourself back up, you know, stay in the game, you, you can do it. Thank you, Mona. I, I really appreciate your time, and we really needed to hear that. Uh, also, tell the people what Aisha Horn Smith is doing with his petition. Um, you can you can check out Facebook or Twitter. There, um, there's a petition that's going online to um, for the resignation of Governor Rick Scott. So, I mean, it's very important that you know we stay abreast to what's going on, you know, in the political world because there's a lot that we can let you know, slide by if, you know, we're not informed about this information, which could be detrimental to the black community. So go online, sign the petition. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here in the game room. This is Malcolm Bradley. We had Monday Bradley with us. Thank you. We'll see you next time.